this chapter, we're going to study logic and reasoning. In this lesson, we're going to look at inductive reasoning. Okay, everybody, starting a new chapter here. And in this lesson, we're going to look at something called inductive reasoning. Okay? Um, there are really two, two basic types of reasoning that we go through. There are probably others out there uh, people are, are identifying and whatnot. But really, in this course, here, we're going to look at two basic types. And one of them is inductive reasoning. And it's just interesting to kind of, when you, when you talk about it and kind of give a name to it and, and think about it, just how often we do this kind of thinking. Um, but we want to make sure that you understand the, the limitations that there are here. So inductive reasoning is a type of reasoning uh, we can use on information given to arrive at a conclusion. Uh, this conclusion or educated guess is based on experience, observations, or patterns. That's inductive reading, reasoning here. What we do here is we generalize from the specific. Okay, We're generalizing from the specific. So you're looking at specific examples of something and then you're going to make a, a guess that that particular pattern that you've witnessed is going to continue to hold. Okay, so the conclusion based on inductive reasoning, okay, this conclusion is called a conjecture. So a conjecture is the conclusion, generalization or educated guess arrived at by inductive reasoning. I just said that. So the conjectures, and this is, <coughs> oh, sorry about that. A conjecture may or may not be true, and that's that's kind of the problem with that. It might be true, it might not be true. A conclusion is made through inductive reasoning is not a valid method of proving that something is true. Although a lot of people tend to think it is, okay? A lot of people tend to think that this is the way that you prove it's going to, that something is going to be true. And so uh, as we go through some examples here, I'll, I'll point out kind of the, the, the error in that kind of thinking as we bump into it. Okay, so let's take a look at just a, a couple of examples right here. So here's the example. I have a bag of coins. The first coin I pulled from the bag is a penny. The second coin I pulled is a penny. The third coin from the bag is a penny. The fourth is a penny. So the conjecture might be that the bag contains only pennies. I mean, I pulled out four pennies, right? That's That's got to be what's going on. Well, not necessarily. It might just, like they say right here, it might just have a lot of pennies in it, okay? So it might be that the probability of pulling out uh, a non-penny coin is just really, really low, okay? So that's that's the problem uh, with with uh, conjectures, okay? Now, just that we're not you don't make a mistake here. Conjectures are important, okay? They're the sorts of things that that lead us into into um, like research. This is this is where we we make guesses about what's going on in the world we see around us, and then we use other forms of reasoning to try to to verify whether this is actually true or not. Now, by the way, it may be that that bag does contain only pennies. That, that could very that could be the case. It just it might not be. We don't know. Okay, but we use inductive reasoning to get a, an idea, and then we test that idea using other forms. Let's take a look at another uh, another form of, um, or another example here. It says on uh, Monday, Sumith leaves for school at 8.30 and arrives on time. On Tuesday, Sumith leaves for school at 8.30 and arrives on time. On Wednesday, Sumith leaves for school at 8.30 and arrives on time. So what conjecture we, we write for Sumith? Okay, uh, if Sumith leaves for school, At 8.30, uh, he will arrive on time. That, that's, that's my guess, okay? Will this conjecture always be true? Well, no. Okay, uh, what if there's an accident? Okay, and he's late, you know, why, there's, there's all sorts of reasons, right? Uh, what if it's the, the weather is miserable and the traffic is really slow, okay? Um, there's all sorts of things that could, that could keep that from happening here. But that, based on the pattern that we've established, that is a reasonable conclusion. It's just that we don't know whether it's true or not.
Okay, now a counterexample. So a counterexample is an example that shows that the conjecture is not true. And here's the thing. Because of the way the conjectures work here, remember that a conjecture takes specific examples and generalizes to a whole pattern there. All I need is one counterexample to invalidate the conjecture. If I can show one where it doesn't work, uh, then we, we know that that conjecture is false. So let's take a look at some examples of that. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at an example here. So if 2 squared plus 1 is 5, and 6 squared plus 1 is 37, and 20 squared plus 1 is 401, you might conjecture, okay, that when an even number is, uh, is squared and then increased by 1, the result is going to be a prime number. Okay? And that's, that seems like a reasonable, uh, a reasonable conjecture. I mean, look at my examples there. However, let's take a look at the next one here. But if I use 8, which is even, and square it and add 1, I get 65. I did exactly what I was doing up here. Okay, in my conjecture, it just simply says when an even number is squared and then increased by 1. So that's what I did. But the result was not the same. Okay, I have to do exactly what the conjecture says. Okay, this has to be replicated here with a different result. Okay, and I'll make, make an order that, okay, uh, different, with a different result to be a counterexample. Let's take a look at another one here. Okay. Dogs are mammals and have four legs. Cats are mammals and have four legs. Bears are mammals and have four legs. Okay. All mammals have four legs. There's my conjecture here. Well, can we come up with an example uh, of a uh, sorry, a counterexample of that? Well, yeah, humans. Okay, humans have two legs. Okay. Uh, not to mention, we might say, you know, dolphins or whales. And I know people are going to, there's always arguments about how you interpret the fins and stuff like this. And so I almost want to back off that. However, uh, I mean, I can find several examples of dogs that only have three legs. Okay. Uh, that sort of thing happens. So counterexamples to that particular uh, general rule do exist. Now let's look at another one here. Okay, we're going to use inductive reasoning, complete the chart, and make a conjecture. Okay, so let's pick a numbers here. We're going to do three test cases here. So let's pick numbers here. I don't know. Let's make it uh, three. Uh, let's try an even number. Let's say eight. Uh, so I have a prime, an even, and let's just throw an odd in there. That's not, that's not, and eh, let's not make it that one. Let's make it, let's say, 12. Okay, so add seven. Okay, so that's going to be 10, add 7, that's going to be 15, add 7, that's going to be 19. Multiply by 2. Okay, so that is going to be 20, that's going to be 30, that is going to be 38. Okay, uh, subtract the original number. Okay, that's going to be uh, 17, that is going to be 22. Uh, that is going to be 26. Subtract 2. Okay, that's going to be 15, 20, 24. Whoops. Uh, subtract the original number. Okay, so that's going to be 12. That's going to be 12. That is going to be 12. Okay. So what's our conjecture? That... Uh, for any uh, original value, this procedure whoops, will always, okay, and notice like for any original value will always produce 12, okay? Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. Might be true. I don't know if I can come up with a counterexample to that. But this is this is what uh, what inductive reasoning is so good at. Is it is it gives us this ability to find a pattern or to uh, see a pattern. We generalize the pattern and then we're going to test it. But like this is a great example. I don't know. Is that always true? 
Well, I'm going to need something other than inductive reasoning to verify whether that's true or false. I don't even know if I could come up with a counterexample to show that it's false. If I could, that'd be great. I don't know that I can, so I need to approach this in a different way. And we'll take a look at that uh, in a different lesson. Mm -hmm.